Welcome back to Learning Docker. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at getting started with Docker Swarms. Now, I feel like this is a bit of a jump from our previous tutorials um, in regards to advanced, uh, sort of an advanced level within Docker, but to be honest, Swarms in Docker are very simple, and as long as you understand the whole concept of sort of uh, load balancers and clustering, it's quite a simple concept to get your head around. So what is a Docker Swarm? A Swarm is a group of machines that are running Docker and joined into a cluster. A Swarm is made up of multiple nodes which can be either physical or virtual machines. Now these are essentially two statements I took from the Docker documentation which I have left a link down below and I felt it was the easiest way to describe a Docker Swarm. So let's have a look first at the benefits of a Docker Swarm. So Essentially, we have a list of features which I've taken again from the Docker documentation. We have cluster management integration with Docker Engine, um, decentralized design, declarative service model, scaling, desired state reconciliation, multi-host networking, service discovery, load balancing, secure by default, and rolling updates. Now, you're probably asking what the hell are a lot of these things. Um, I'm not going to go into them because if you're interested, please feel free to read the documentation. I don't want to like a 20, 30 minute tutorial on what all the sort of aspects of uh, a Docker Swarm are. To be honest, the only thing that I'm really concerned about in this whole thing is cluster management and load balancing. Um, but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail as um, I sort of progress with these tutorials. So let's have a look at an overview of a Docker Swarm. A Docker Swarm, is, like I said, like it stated, is a sort of a cluster of nodes. Now these uh, could be anything. These can be, well I say anything, they can either be a virtual machine or they can be physical hardware. Um, a Docker Swarm should always have a Swarm Manager that basically manages all the nodes in the cluster and then it will also require a set of nodes. Now it doesn't actually, in theory, if I'm correct, have to have nodes, but for it to work effectively, you need them. So obviously all the nodes connect to the manager and all the nodes have their own version of Docker running on them, which all themselves manage containers. And that's as simple as a, a Docker swarm is. So Docker manager with nodes that manage containers. That's really a very simple concept. So. We're going to set up a, a Docker Swarm, um, and we're essentially going to set up a Docker Swarm with two nodes, the first being a manager and the second being a member of the cluster. A lot of this tutorial was based off the official documentation, which can be found at the link below, so I've left a link in the um, Google slide. I'll leave a link in the Google slide in the description box down below if you're interested. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is you're going to have to, if you're going to do anything with Hyper-V, you need to run um, the application as the administrator. Now you probably notice I'm running um, visual visual code as administrator. For this to work, I basically have to. You can obviously run this in PowerShell as well. Uh, I've not actually tried with VirtualBox, so I don't really know the outcome of this. Now I'm gonna show you the setup mechanisms for both. So I'll start with Hyper-V because that's what I've already set up. Now the first thing you've, you need to do is one, make sure that you have Hyper-V enabled by your uh, BIOS. Um, you also need Windows 10 to use Hyper-V. Then you need to get yourself a copy of the Hyper-V Manager, which I think actually comes with Windows 10. Now you can access the Hyper-V Manager by just simply hitting the start button, type in Hyper-V, and you get the Hyper-V Manager. I've already got it running, so I'll just bring it up. Now have to, you have to, excuse me, because the Hyper-V Manager is, uh, I don't think it's scalable, so I can't zoom in and out. Um, so I'm gonna have to just describe it to you. Yeah, I can't zoom in and out on this at all. So basically on the right hand side, you'll notice there is a set of actions and one of these is Virtual Switch Manager. So if you click Virtual Switch Manager, you get a tool which will allow you to create virtual switches. So what you need to do is click Create a New Virtual Network Switch. Now I've already done this because when you do this and apply it, it pretty much just resets your whole net connect, uh, network connection, drops your net and so forth. So I've already done this and I don't really want to drop my net connection again. Um, so I've created a virtual switch called Docker Swarm. And the only things that you need to make sure that are in this Docker Swarm is one, you need to make sure that you have a valid name and something you can remember to reference. And in the connection type, you need an external network, which is your ethernet connection, 
So just make sure it's your valid Ethernet connection, the one you're connected to the internet on essentially. And also allow management operating system to share this network adapter and that is very important. Otherwise your virtual host cannot use it. So now we've got that set up, uh, you'll notice that I actually have a couple of virtual machines running here. Moby Linux VM is my, uh, if you cast your mind back to the first tutorial, is my virtualized Docker uh, Linux machine, which all my containers run off. I also have two other virtual machines in this, Node Cluster and Node Manager, which I'll now show you in a little bit more detail, but um, I've created these before I started recording this video because they usually take about five to 10 minutes to spin up. So to spin these up, all I simply did was execute the command docker machine create dash D hyper V dash dash hyper V dash virtual dash switch. Make sure that you specify docker swarm, which is obviously the, the switch, the virtual switch that we created. And uh, the first um, virtual machine we need to spin up is node manager and the second one is node cluster so these two commands need to be executed now if you're using a virtual box so obviously go to oracle box um, uh, virtual box download the oracle virtual box um, application um, make sure it's installed the service is running and so forth and then you can run the command very similar to the, the hyper v command docker dash machine create dash dash driver virtual box and then essentially the same node manager and node cluster so once you have these two up and running you should be able to verify that your nodes exist so i can just go ahead and type docker machine ls and now i can see that i actually have two virtual machines running for me now these are the docker um the docker machine virtual machines now because I have two of these machines running, I'll let me just jump back to the diagram a minute and I can show you what I have. So essentially I've got the Swarm Manager and Node One, but essentially these haven't been defined. If anything at the moment, all I've got is Node One and Node Two and no Swarm Manager or anything. So I need to first initialize one of these nodes or one of these virtual machines as my Swarm Manager. And I can do that with the command um, docker machine ssh node manager so what i'm doing is sshing onto the virtual machine i can actually also do this through hyper v so i can go to the node manager click connect and what it'll do is it'll actually spin up a um, terminal for me but that's quite small and doesn't help you too much if you're especially doing this with virtual box actually i think you can still do this with virtual box but either way i'm going to do it from um, the command line just because it's a little bit easier and it's also keeping in um keeping in with the theme of following the docker documentation so from the ssh via the docker machine command to the node manager i can just simply state docker so it's like executing docker locally swarm in it and then advertise address. Now, what I'm saying is I wanna initialize myself as a Docker node or swarm manager, and I'm advertising uh, that I am from an address, and I'm gonna state the address of 192.168.1.26, which is the IP of my, actually no, sorry, it's the 192.168.1.25, which is the IP of my node manager. So, I execute that and wait a moment hopefully I've done this right it should there we go swarm initialized current node random string uh, is now a manager to add a worker to this swarm run the following command now it's important to make note of this command because the next thing that we're going to do is add our node cluster to our swarm and we do this with the command that it's just given us. So what it's given us is docker. And in fact, what I need to do is similarly to this previous command. So I need to execute command on the node cluster. So do that by simply stating docker machine SSH node cluster this time. And then I want to execute the command docker swarm join swarm join token and now I'm going to copy and paste this token because it's huge and I'm not typing all that out. So paste the token and then the IP of the advertising address. So that's 192.168.1.25 port 2325. 
So I'm saying now the cl the node cluster is to join the Docker swarm of the Docker of the node manager. Now hopefully if all goes well, that should work. And come on, let's see. Now, once that command has executed, it's still in the process of trying to join the swarm. Might take a minute or two. Some of these commands are a little bit slow, especially as I'm running them through a virtual machine. Okay, so we have an error. Uh, latest connection. Uh, connection has been refused. Ah, sorry, I had got the port wrong. It's 2377. It's important to make note of the IP that's here and also the IPs. Uh, sorry, the IP that is given you to join the swarm. Because if you don't use, I mean, sorry, the port that it gives you to join the swarm. There we go. So I've now, this node has joined the swarm, swarm as a worker. So let's just verify that everything is working okay. So if I do docker machine, SSH, the node manager, and do no, docker node ls, just to check all the nodes of the, of the docker swarm, Hopefully we should see two, and I should see a leader as well. Again, this can be quite slow. Here we go. So, we've got two nodes in our swarm, and we have the node manager as the manager status as leader. So, fantastic. Everything seems to have been set up and working fine. Now, it's a bit tedious trying to execute all the commands through Docker Machine SSH. So, what I can do is bind my local Docker machine to the Swarm Manager um, with the Docker machine environment. So, um, I can run Docker machine environment node manager to see what the environment variables are of the node manager. So, this is all the um, the environment variables. Now, what I can do is simply state that um, Docker machine environment node manager and pipe it to invoke expression. Let's see if I can type expression right there. Now, this is a Windows specific command. If you want to execute it for Linux, you just type do the same thing with instead of invoke expression, you do eval dollar open bracket docker dash machine env node manager close bracket now obviously when i say linux i obviously mean nix so that's linux window uh, Lin sorry again linux uh, mac os um, and then all various distributions i don't know if actually uh, docker is available for bsd but if it was it would be that so we can simply state now docker machine ls to verify that we have actually associated it to our Docker machine. Now, if you notice, under the active status, node manager has a star next to it, which means that we are now using the Docker machine of the swarm manager to manage our, well, essentially to manage our Docker swarm. And that is basically it for today's tutorial. I, I just wanted to show you the basics of getting a swarm up and running and allowing you to create a, a very basic um, manager worker sort of setup. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in the content I will be providing, hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, um, leave it in the description box down below. But until next time, I hope this has been useful to you, and I'll catch you around.